about properties on the nanoscale. So I've made some references in class to uh, one of the reasons nanotechnology is so cool is because you've got this periodic table of elements, you thought everything was kind of figured out, and then you start going small and you realize, wow, if you're talking about just a couple atoms of a certain type, sometimes they act completely different. So we're going to talk about what some of those different properties are. Um, and by the way, nanoscience and nanotechnology isn't just about material science or physics or chemistry. It really overlaps and contributes uh, to many applications in lots of different areas. Okay, so first of all, why would we even want to make things smaller? Like, why have this push? I like to show this picture of this guy with his giant phone. Um, you want everything to be easier, right? You want an easier life, you want a happier life, you want a healthier life. And uh, a lot of people think that this is leading us there. Some may beg to differ, but this is kind of the driving force here. Um, there's a great video that we're also going to watch in class, and if you miss it, please watch it. Um, it's actually an award-winning video. It's, I think it's a 17-minute, yes, 17-minute video, and it highlights some of these cool properties and talks about some of the applications. And you'll really like the narrator. He's got a fun accent. Okay, so I'm going to skip over that, but please find my lecture and find that. Um, so why is nano so interesting? When particles are small, there's a really high surface area to volume ratio, meaning when things are shrunken down, they, they're pretty much all surface area. There's hardly anything left inside. So they react differently, they act differently, they interact with light differently, and they're on the scale of small biological structures. Uh, the width of DNA, for example, is two nanometers wide. Um, these interesting new structures like buckyballs and carbon nanotubes, to name a couple, um, have cool new properties. And we're also talking about classical physics versus quantum physics. Um, neither really applies in uh, the area of the nanoscale. So there's a little bit more in-depth uh, explanations of that in the quantum physics lecture. So in a nutshell, classical physics is physics at the macro scale versus quantum physics is physics at the micro scale. Classical physics, uh, many of you have taken this in class. And there's usually some different areas like mechanics, dynamics, hydrodynamics, statics, uh, optics, thermodynamics, acoustics, magnetism, electricity. Those are some of the topics that are frequently covered. Quantum physics, uh, you may also talk about in classical physics, just at the end of the semester, or the end of the year. Um, this is where we're talking about, uh, what. first of all, what is the quantum? I forgot about that. We're talking about energy that can come in discrete packets called quanta. And there are five main ideas uh, from that stem from quantum theory. First, energy is not continuous. Like I was just saying, it comes in these small, discrete packets. And elementary particles, such as electrons, behave both like particles and like waves. The movement of these particles is totally random. And it's impossible to know both the exact location and speed of a particle at the same time. That's called the uncertainty principle, and that is covered in the uh, quantum physics lecture. And the atomic world is nothing like the world that we live in. And I really like this quote by Niles Bohr. Uh, Anyone who is not shocked by quantum theory has not yet understood it. Uh, what do you think this means? Physical structure leads to physical properties. Well, what's interesting on the nanoscale is that because there's this uh, really high percentage of surface atoms, these materials have a large surface energy, and this leads to different properties. There are also reduced imperfections. Uh, when you're talking about something that's really small, there's less of a chance that as the crystal or the particle is growing, that a mistake is made. So let's talk about the surface area, surface energy a little bit more. Okay, so you can, you can see here if you were to count up how many total atoms are making up this square, and this would of course be in 3D, but this is 2D right now, um, versus this one versus the smallest one. The smallest one is all surface here. There's nothing inside it. 
Okay, and check this out. As the diameter of a nanoparticle decreases, the percentage of surface atoms increases. Um, this usually means that the particle's unstable. Things that are small are driven to grow. They want to be stable. So this can cause problems if you're trying to keep nanoparticles nano. Um, you have to kind of interfere with that uh, natural process that is pushing toward growth. And we talk about that in, um, when we're starting to talk about synthesizing zero-dimensional nanoparticles. Okay, so let's talk about this reduced imperfection. So I'm going to just start drawing a crystal. Okay, so here are my atoms, here's my crystal that's forming, it's going really well, okay, and then all of a sudden, oops, you're building, you're building, and then, uh-oh, so as something grows bigger, the um, larger the chance that something like this will happen. Um, let's see here, what properties are affected by physical structures, and what can, what can properties what can properties can we tune? What properties can we tune? I need to fix that. Um, melting point is affected. Mechanical properties, electrical properties, light properties, and optical properties. Okay, so let's touch on each of these. Melting points. If there's a higher surface energy, things are going to melt uh, quick more quickly. Nanostructures that are less than 100 nanometers have a lower melting point, a.k.a. they're easier to melt than their macroscopic version, okay? Um, why? Like I said, it has to do with this high surface energy. The smaller a structure is, the less energy it takes to melt them. And that kind of makes sense. Um, and, you know, you can look at gold, for example. Gold's melting point, don't quote me, but I believe it's over 1,000 degrees Celsius or somewhere in there. But nanoparticles of gold are, are, uh, have a melting point that's much, much smaller. Mechanical properties, so this is talking about strength. So as size decreases, things get stronger, and it has to do with that perfection. Um, because there aren't any mistakes in the structure, they're really, really strong. This is a graph showing the strength of NaCl whiskers. As they were smaller in microns, the strength went up relative to their size. So that's interesting. Electrical properties, um, in a regular wire, something called electron scattering increases. Electrons aren't flowing, um, or are flowing less efficiently. Um, so as you get smaller and smaller, this kind of changes, and the electrons uh, scatter because the ions within the wire are moving around because of these imperfections. But like I was saying earlier, when the wire gets smaller, there aren't these imperfections anymore. So because of the fewer defects, less scattering occurs. And um, there are other side effects that um, are not as desirable, but it's interesting that these wires act differently, and so they can have different uses. Um, a little bit of background on something called band gap theory. Okay, you may remember from chemistry, you've got atoms in their brown state, their lowest energy. Uh, something happens where a photon interacts with an electron, the electron gets excited and it jumps up to what's called the conduction band from its valence band. And this is how um, electrons flow, electricity. So they can jump to this higher energy level. So here's a picture showing an electron has to jump this gap, okay? And it jumps from the valence band into the conduction band. What's interesting about, let's see here, We've got a metal, there's no band gap. Electrons can flow easily from the valence band to the conduction band. Here's an insulator where an electron cannot make that jump. A semiconductor where just with just enough energy it can make that jump. And nanoparticle semiconductors, the band gap actually increases. Um, they still work as a semiconductor though. This is a really interesting effect. What's so great about semiconductors anyways? Well, semiconductors like silicon are pretty much used in every sort of electronic, and um, that's because you can turn them on and off. And if you've taken some of the computer science classes, you know a lot more about that. Okay, light properties, this is cool. Um, because 
uh, nanoparticles interact differently with light. Um, you can see some interesting effects. And it's because sometimes they're actually smaller than the wavelength of light. So the way that wavelengths uh, interact with those is, is quite different. Um, a great example is if you see like an iridescent um, butterfly wing, this is a uh, butterfly wing magnified, you can see there are these tiny little holes here. So you get this interesting effect. Okay. Um, there's also something called surface plasma plasmon resonance. It's kind of a tongue twister. Um, this is when you're talking about metal nanoparticles. An entire sea of electrons gets excited and it vibrates. Um, you can use these for a lot of different sensor applications. For example, we'll get into this more later, but um, the pregnancy test, actually, when you see the red line, a lot of those tests, that's actually red nanoparticles um, that are in there. And like I was talking about earlier with the semiconductors, what they found is that the smaller the nanoparticle, the quantum dot in this case, the larger the band gap. Okay, so these can be turned on and off in different situations. And also quantum dots are used in medical imaging. Here is a picture of a mouse that is lit up. These are prostate tumors um, in the mouse, and they've been tagged with quantum dots, and uh, they're green, yellow, and red, apparently they're a lot brighter than normal fluorescent uh, imaging, so you can see them better. So, cool stuff, and that's just an introduction to a lot of different things that we're going to get more into. Uh, so if my explanation wasn't very good yet, don't worry, we're going to get to it. <laughs>